Today, we're going to talk about the process of how I got from this point of just taking a picture of a potato chip bag and what actually happened for me to do that. Why did I take a picture of this bag? All the way from that to uh, actually looking at the research behind kettle cooked chips, organizing my thoughts, and then finally getting to the finished product um, that I sent out. Is it perfect? No. But... It, I thought it'd be kind of cool to to let you guys in on on how this actually works because I've seen some comments. Uh, those of you who are asking, okay, how how do you actually, uh, you know, go from this idea to the breaking down the idea, creating your own version of it, but then turning it into an article, an atomic essay, a blog post, whatever. So this is this is me explaining how that works. Okay, but let's start off with the genesis of the story i i tried these chips i don't know why i picked them up at the grocery store but i picked them up at the grocery store and i was probably eating them for about two or three weeks and i just fell in love with the chips and i thought for a while like why do i love these chips and i read on the bag i read on the bag that it says uh kettle cooked and you can't see it in this picture but it says something like made the old-fashioned way now that that caught my attention right so when we when we find something that catches our attention even if it's a bag of potato chips you know <laughs> there is potentially some ideas that you can uncover here okay so made the old-fashioned way and i, I documented that in my in the journal of heptabase uh which is equivalent of the daily note if you're in obsidian or any other note-taking app that has daily notes it's my daily note and I put it in there, and you can see in the the data here that, or in the info that I that I documented this, or I wrote it down on October first, um, and I made turned it into a card, and I just had a few notes. My new favorite chips. How are they made? Made the old-fashioned way. Just a few things to just jog my memory of why I uh, wrote it down. I want to pause just for a moment here and give you a free gift for hanging out with me today. This is a short PDF guide on how to get insights from the nonfiction books that you read and that you love into your PKM system. By the end of this guide, you'll have a simple system for highlighting your books, a mindful approach for adding content to your PKM system or PKM notes app, a process for creating building blocks of knowledge for the future, and then a simple tip for making more connections between your notes. The link to the free guide is in the description below. So when I was ready to dive in to this idea, y'all know if you've seen my videos before, I like to throw them into a whiteboard, a whiteboard that is inside of the workbench. Okay. In Heptabase, you have a, a way to create whiteboards within whiteboards. So right now we're looking at my workbench whiteboard sorry about that and so the the idea is i keep all the ideas that i'm thinking about currently inside of the workbench whiteboard so you can see right here kettle creators is in the front burner section these are these are sections right here I have the back burner section pondering section kettle creators is in the front burner section so i i dragged this white uh this card onto the whiteboard these are all the cards. You can drag it onto a whiteboard. If you've seen my other videos, you know how that works. If not, feel free to check out all the other tutorials on Heptabase. You can see how all this works when it comes to the functionality of the whiteboards. Okay, so I asked Jack, G chat, not Jack, chat GPT to tell me 10 interesting facts about kettle cooked chips. All right, so let's hop over there real quick. Chat GPT. And I asked, what are 10 unique facts about kettle cooked chips? And here it spit out 10 facts. Okay. And what I did is I took the ones that stood out to me and I copy and pasted each of them and put them into the whiteboard. And this is what came out. The traditional cooking method, the crunchier texture caught my attention, the more flavor variety and the heat variation during cooking. Um, and then 
you'll notice that I bolded some things here. Uh, so we have lower temperatures and we have batch frying process. This is the hallmark of their distinct mouthfeel. Hold uh, seasoning better. I just bolded things that stood out to me. And to, to back up, when I say stood out to me, what I'm talking about is I have a lens that I'm looking through, right? Uh, there are things that I love to talk about, things that I love to think about. One of those is creativity and being a maker in this world, being a designer, an inventor, a creator, a maker of things and words and, and all the kinds of stuff, right? I just, I'm passionate about creativity and how we are all created to create. And so I'm looking at these uh, just, you know, almost boring things about the traditional cooking method and crunchier texture and the, the research behind all this. Um, when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it through the lens of creativity because that's what I'm, I'm passionate about. It could be anything for you. Whatever you're passionate about, you could be looking at research from a completely different industry. Right? We're talking about kettle cooked chips and I'm looking at it through the lens of creativity. And that's where actually creativity lies, is right? That this, the connection of the disparate ideas and industries. Anyways, real rabbit trail there. Okay, so I copy and pasted, I got the bolded items. And then what I started to do is just jot down what am I thinking about right now as it relates to what I'm reading, right? And so, for example, to the traditional cooking method, I started writing kettle creators i don't know why i started writing kettle creators but kettle creators because we're talking about kettle chips i guess they understand that their greatest contribution is not in the in following the crowd but in finding those uh, things in which they are uniquely created for um and this this kind of spoke to me regarding the the you know the mass produced um way of making other kinds of chips right kettle creators our kettle cooked chips taste differently. They are unique because of the way that they're made. Okay, so that's what I was going for. Now, when I when I started to write that down, I thought of something else that was already in my PKM system, right? And that is give what you have to someone. It may be better than you dare to think. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Love this quote. Now, I started to uh, dive into this note. And you'll notice that on the bottom here, we have places that this note lives, okay? The little whiteboard icon is here. So I have this in two different uh, whiteboards right now, Kettle Creators and also On Releasing Your Creations, which is a, a poetry analysis that I did. So I jumped into the poetry analysis because I'm following the scent if you want to call it that, the scent of the idea. Uh, I first thought of the, the Henry uh, Wadsworth quote, and and it got me and it got me thinking, man, I should look into where this note lives because there may be other ideas in the other places that it lives that I can take those ideas and apply it to the kettle cooked creator. And so I'm looking through the whiteboard, and bam, this note jumps out at me. The joy of a creator is when he discovers that what he's made has found its way in another's heart. Right? This was written down because of a poem that I read called The Arrow and the Song. Now, it's now being used not only in this board, but also in this board. It reminds me of that, and then I can fill in with the, the link to the, the note. Right, and that's just at, and then you search for it. <clears throat> now, I was doing that for all these here. Uh, I just was looking at all of the the research, the ten inter interesting facts, and started jotting down my ideas and just what I was thinking, my just my thoughts, unedited, and just plain old. What am I thinking right now as I'm reading this? And that's what I did. And then I started to categorize my thoughts and kind of give it some structure. As I was diving into these ideas, I thought, okay, how can I take this and, and give it a little bit of, of structure? 
So I, I started writing a um, an intro. It wasn't really what I was going to use, but it is the context to set up what I really wanted to communicate. And, and that is these three things, right? That uh, kettle creators dive into their unique God-given gifting. Kettle creator, creators, <laughs> creators are patient. And then they embrace the hand-stirred method of creativity. And I put in the uh, the facts from the kettle cook chips in here as well, in addition to my thoughts and also the quotes and stuff and the other notes that I had. So I added all these, and then I added finally, um, you know, a conclusion, which for me is just uh, you know which one of these speak to you the most. It was just a quick, you know, application kind of conclusion. Now I do want to tell you the way that. I have found uh, to write atomic essay, atomic essays is what I call the tell me more method. And it helps me to put ideas into a way that is intriguing and it gives both a big idea and it gives explanation of the idea and it also gives application. So let me dive into this note just real quick. The tell me more method for writing atomic essays and a shortened version. It's step one is anticipation. Imagine you're sitting across from the table from a friend. You tell them one big idea that you've been thinking about. This is the genesis of the essay or the conversation. It's intriguing, it's surprising, it's brave, and it's powerful. All right. Then step two is the explanation. The person now sitting across from you has their eyebrows raised and they're intrigued. And they say, hmm, tell me more about that. All right? Or, hmm, what do you, what do you mean? Like, like tell, tell me more. What do you mean? And then you tell them a story or give them a sticky analogy. In this case, the kettle creators, uh, kettle cooked chips is the sticky analogy to make the idea come alive. Right. And then step three is the application. You give one practical tip uh, or ask them to do something to achieve the idea or get closer to the, the main idea that you've been talking about. So I wanted to use that framework, that method uh, to create this atomic essay. So here's what I did. I wanted to do, I wanted to do an experiment. I wanted to tell chat GPT what my method was the tell me more method. And then I wanted to put in my raw notes, which were these right here. After I explained to chat GPT what the tell me more method was, then I put this in and told it to create a atomic essay based on that method. And so this is what we have, okay, uh, right here, I think. I started out by saying, can you make this 10% more interesting while keeping my, my style and tone? And then I put in all of my, my, uh, my notes. And it did. It gave me an interesting, 10% uh, more interesting way. Uh, and that's when I had this thought. Maybe, maybe I should actually tell it to use the tell me more method okay so back and forth a little bit here and then i finally get to the method here so i say i've got this method of writing that i'd like you to apply and here's the method i give it the method and i say i need i want you to rewrite the atomic essay on kettle creators the thing above that i put using this method okay and this is what came out and and then I had some some tweaks. I created a little bit different version of it and told it to do it again. And finally, what we are looking at is the final product. Will you be a kettle uh, or conveyor belt creator? Lately, I've been hooked on kettle cooked jalapeno chips. So good. Honestly, they might be my new addiction. Compared to regular Lay's, these feel like the Hulk of potato chips. Stronger, bolder, and just packed with flavor. And it got me thinking, why do these taste so much better? And after doing a little research, I stumbled upon three lessons on creativity that I'd like to share with you. Tell me more, you ask. Um, I could have done without this. You don't really need that. But I just left it in there. So I say, all right, so here's the deal. 
Kettle cooked chips are made in small batches in an open kettle, cooked slowly at lower temperatures. So it's using the facts that I gave. Um, and that's why they're so much richer in flavor and texture compared to conveyor belt chips that are mass produced in a continuous process. And then we tie it in. Kettle, kettle creators are similar. They take their time diving deep into their unique God-given gifts. This is the idea that I had, uh, creating something that can't just be replicated by following the crowd, right? It just tweaked it a little bit. The joy of the creator. This is the one, this is the note that I had that I tied into my original thoughts, right? Uh, the joy of the creator is when they discover that they've made, let me read that again. The joy of the creator is when they discover that what they've made has found its way into someone else's heart. And then it pulled in the quote for me. As Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said, give what you have to someone, it may be better than you dare to think. Kettle creators understand this. They know that their work has meaning because it's rooted in who they truly are. And then there's patience, right? Kettle chips are fried longer, giving them their golden brown color and that deliciously robust flavor. It's a process that can't be rushed, and the same is true for creativity. Kettle creators are patient, trusting that the extra time they invest will result in a product that stands out, a quality creation that's worth waiting for. What, how do they get that artisanal feel? Right, Kettle chips are hand-stirred during frying. This manual intervention adds imperfections, slight variations in color and texture that might uh, that make each batch unique. And similarly, uh, kettle creators embrace the beauty of imperfe imperfection. Oh, that's funny how I just just messed up that word. Ironic. All right, uh, every creation has its own signature, shaped by the hand-stirred process of creativity, where no two outcomes are exactly the same. Which lesson speaks to you the most? Do you need to find your zone of genius, become more patient, or embrace the beauty of the hand stirred method? Whatever it is, take a moment today to reflect on how you can apply this to your own creative process. So there you go. I, I hope this was encouraging to you. Um, just to recap, though, we, we have gone over all the way the process of taking down a note, right? the spark of the idea, the development of the idea and then finally the final product right and if this if this is encouraging to you let me know um if you have any questions on the process if you have insights of your own of how you create atomic essays let me know as well in the comments i'd love to to hear from you thanks again for watching and hanging out with me and i'll see you next time